So, we've seen the mighty Acropolis and a large scattering of Roman ruins within Athens, but there are even more ancient treasures to uncover on the northern slopes. Not only that, but some pretty big ones too. Ancient Athens spread out around the Acropolis back in the days of classical Greece, and to the northwest was a large agora that was the centre point of trade in the city. With a spacious conserved area to walk around and a couple large buildings to see, let's take a look inside. Located adjacent to the metro line that connects central Athens to the port of Piraeus is the Greek Agora, a separate archaeological site also covered within that archaeological site's pass of Athens. It is a well-maintained area with many paths to walk around, and on a lovely 30 degree plus day like this one, I couldn't think of anything I'd rather do then wander around a large open space in the afternoon heat with virtually no shade around to speak of. Most of the remains are small traces of foundations with the odd scattered pillar, but there are two which are the main attractions of this site, though the first one is technically a fake. One of the main attractions here at the Greek Agora is the massive Stoa of Atalos. This multi-level arcade building used to stand here within the Forum area, and the one you can see behind me is a reconstruction built in 1956. So yes, not an original building, but to be realistic, there is no way such a huge building like this was going to stay intact for all those centuries. The original building was constructed around 150 BC and was 150 metres in length by 20 metres in width, and once you're inside within the long row of columns that supports the upper level, that size really does show. Following the original foundation plans as much as possible and incorporating what had remained of the stoa within the reconstruction, the building is complete with Doric columns for the colonnade and a wooden beamed roof. Not only was there the ground level, but a first floor was also added, and the reconstruction means that you can ascend to the upper level. From up here you can get a nice view out across the rest of the archaeological site, and one temple shaped building in particular but we'll get to that one later. Housing a range of activities back in the days of ancient Greece, it continued up in use until 267 AD, when, just like so many other buildings in Athens, it succumbed to the ravages of the invasion by the Heruli tribe. Today, the Stoa of Atalos acts as a museum for the collection of finds that were unearthed at the Greek Agora, from large pots and other ceramic artefacts to tools used in everyday life. There is also a large scale reconstruction of what the Greek Agora would have originally looked like back in its day, and it's actually quite sad to look at this and see just how much has been lost to time. As you make your way back down, one thing that clearly looks out of place is this handrail. I bet the ancient Greeks didn't bother with those. The Stoa of Atalos is undoubtedly great, but it's not an original, so it's time to go and find something that is. After a little bit of a climb, a large, mostly intact temple comes into view, and this is exactly what you'd expect to see if you think of ancient Greek ruins. Dedicated to the Greek god of metalworking and fire, 
The temple of Hephaestus was originally built under the reign of Pericles in the mid-5th century BC. Considering all the other ancient buildings within this site are little more than fractured foundations, it is sheer luck that this temple has survived the ravages of time that clearly took every other building around it down. As with many other ancient buildings of this type, the answer in this temple's survival lies in the reuse as a Christian church around the 7th century AD. Amazingly, it served in this purpose right up until 1834, when it was converted to use as a museum. Today it no longer performs this function, and there is no access to the inner chamber of the temple, though you can clearly see through to the other side throughout the columns of the facade. Whilst you're up here, there are two things you should particularly look to do. One is to walk all the way around the temple to fully take in this architectural masterpiece, and the other is to get a good panoramic view across the remainder of the site, where you can see the Stoa of Atalos, the remainder of the Greek Agora, and of course, the Acropolis. Clearly missing the vast majority of the buildings that once made up this very busy marketplace, which was the centre of ancient Greek life here almost two and a half thousand years ago, there is nevertheless still plenty to explore around the Agora. It is great to see an ancient building fully restored and opened up to the public, so you can take a look inside at what these large public buildings would have once looked like. But for me, the star of the show was undoubtedly the Temple of Hephaestus. The walk around the site itself is nice enough, well maintained with trees and paths to follow by the foundations and remains of the past. Some later uses of the area after the Greeks can also be seen, with the main surviving example of this being a complete 10th century Byzantine Holy Church of the Apostles. If you have enjoyed this video, why not leave a like and follow my channel for more, and I'll bring you many more places from around Athens, as well as historical places from the rest of the world. Over until next time, see you around.